Welcome one, welcome all, and welcome back for another dose of Nightmare Fuel. This time I'm gonna delve into Disney and see what ingredients are swirling inside The Black Cauldron, Disney's 25th feature-length animation. The Black Cauldron was released in 1985, right between the beloved classics The Fox and the Hound and Basil the Great Mouse Detective. But for some reason, The Black Cauldron wasn't and still isn't mainstream popular. It doesn't have a widespread public nostalgia for it in the same way as other movies around that time like The Little Mermaid. But why is The Black Cauldron not considered a classic? Could it be down to the plot? Could it be down to the characters? Or could it be down to being one of the most nightmare-inducing animated movies ever made? Hmm, I wonder. The film is loosely based on the first two novels of the Chronicles of Prydain series, which themselves take inspiration from Welsh mythology. In the land of Prydain, the Black Cauldron is a sacred magical item that contains world-conquering power. Inside the cauldron is the demonic spirit of an evil king feared by the gods. The king is said to be that hard to contain, they had to kill him by encasing him in a crucible and filling it with molten iron. Christ! That's nightmare fuel already as it is. But the cauldron also has the power of being able to resurrect an army of dead warriors, and as such is sought after by this movie's villain, the Horned King. How Soulsborne is that, am I right? And the film follows our group of young heroes trying to destroy the Black Cauldron, preventing it from falling into the Horned King's hands. Our main hero is a pig farmer named Taran, who dreams of being a famous warrior. Yep, good luck with that, mate, you just got knocked out by a goat. He later links up with this furry little bastard that looks like Geppetto crossed with a dog and talks like an inspiration to Gollum. Master, master. Now, Gurgi remembers, yes, yes. This fuzzy little fucker's name is Gurgi, and he's an annoying prick, that's for certain. Taran's pet pig, Henwin, gets attacked by a swarm of evil dragons. Christ, these things are horrendous. They screech and roar as they attack and steal Henwin and take him to the castle, where she's approached by the Horned King, seeking her visions of the cauldron's location. Earlier in the film, when we first see the Horned King, and every time we see him thereafter, it's always a dog daunting experience. The first impression we get is when Henwen uses her powers in a water bucket to unveil swirling shadows of the Horned King reaching out of the cauldron. Then we arrive at the Horned King's castle, which again is so Dark Souls. Booming trumpets blast through your eardrums as we zoom on in and see the king from behind. Then we hear his voice. Soon the Black Cauldron will be mine. That's so badass. He's voiced by John Hurt, who's an incredible voice actor. And then combining that voice with the look of him, a skeletal face and sharp talons extending from beneath his cloak, this is a terrifying villain if there ever was one. He makes Skeletor and Mumra look like teddy bears. The Horned King even has a room full of skeletal soldiers, which are intended to be his army of the dead when he gets his hands on the cauldron. And this imagery too is so disgusting disturbing and gothic. This is pure nightmare imagery. In fact, the world of Prydain in general is full of nightmare imagery. Sharp, rocky landscapes, red skies, lightning storms, warped, spiky trees, a treacherous landscape that is always full of dangers and threats. You can't help but feel that no matter where Taran goes, he's never safe. There's something frightening behind every corner, so it constantly puts you into a state of suspense, never knowing what Prydain will throw at him next. This is proven further as the film even contains several jump scares. Yeah, you heard me, because that's just what you need in a kid's film, isn't it? Come on out. Here's a lovely... Yeah! Lovely, thanks for that. Taran is captured by the Horned King, but is saved by a young girl named Ilonwi, who has also been captured, and in turn, they save a bard named Fluda as they escape from the castle. We think for a little while they've got some respite from the horrors of Prydain, as we get a good portion of the film removing a lot of the scary elements. We get to see some cute little fairies, some lovely scenic locations, all is well. But then the team formulate the plan of destroying the cauldron to save Prydain, and 
that's when we re-enter the nightmare realm. A room full of eyes, a trio of witches, even more dark, cloudy skies, and ultimately they come across the black cauldron which emerges from the ground. The witches state that the cauldron can't be destroyed, but its powers can be stopped by any living being who climbs inside it. The catch is, they can never climb back out of it for the rest of their lives. That right there is a horrifying concept. The idea that you can save the world, but you have to live the rest of your life trapped in constant darkness in a confined space. Claustrophobia overdrive on that one right there. So while the gang sit and contemplate what to do, the dragons begin to circle the area, and the Horned King's knights surround them. They're captured, as well as the cauldron, and are all returned to the castle. Here, the Horned King breathes life into his army of the dead with the cauldron's powers. Clouds of green smoke seep their way into the eye sockets of the skulls, and one by one, they resurrect. Try getting that image out of your head at night. Gergi dives into the cauldron, sacrificing himself to destroy the dead army, along with the Horned King, who is sucked into the cauldron. His flesh is shredded from his body as a burst of flame and energy surges through him and completely decimates him. Taran, Ilonwi, and Fluda escape the crumbling castle, but the cauldron survives. The witches want to have it for themselves, and so Taran trades it for Gurgi to be returned. Somehow he's alive, though. This totally undermines the rules of the cauldron and takes all the meaning of his sacrifice and just fucks it off. Terrible decision to end it with, but there we go, that's the Black Cauldron. And to be honest, personally, I really enjoyed it on the whole, and I can see why it has a cult following as an underrated classic. But to the general public, absolutely no chance. Disney put a lot of faith into this one. It was their first animated film to feature the use of CGI in some segments, which I actually really like and think it adds some cool texture to the images. But that also means that at the time, it was Disney's most expensive animated movie made, with an enormous budget of $44 million. But the fear factor of the film must have got out into the public eye and parents prevented their kids from coming to see this demonic powerhouse as it was a massive bomb at the box office, bringing back only $21.3 million, an enormous loss of $22.7 million. This movie put Disney's animation studio into jeopardy and nearly caused them to shut up shop and call it a day. They didn't even release the film on home video until 1998, 13 years after its initial cinema release. The Black Cauldron has always been a terrible omen for Disney, and they are in no hurry to remember it. But the kids that did see it have a lot to remember. One of the scariest kids movie villains ever, monstrous predators waiting to strike, genuinely startling jump scares, and petrifying imagery throughout, set in an ominous world full of death and despair around every corner. Pradain is a dark place that just reeks of evil, and that left a foreboding impression on everyone who saw it. Did the Black Cauldron frighten you as a kid, or can you look back on it as an adult and appreciate it for its horror elements? Let me know in the comments below, as well as any other scary entries made by Disney that you'd like us to cover on the channel. If you don't want to be trapped inside a cauldron for eternity, then legend has it clicking the subscribe button will be a great help in preventing it. I'm Connor from Unleash the Ghouls, and until next time, ghoul gang, good night and sweet nightmare-fueled dreams.